Are you interested in cybersecurity? Do you want to know the top tips to getting a cybersecurity internship? Well, stick around and I'll give you my top five tips to getting a cybersecurity internship. Hello, 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 and welcome. So I know that getting a cybersecurity internship is why you're watching this video. I know that in the college atmosphere, there's a growing amount of programs that are increasing for cybersecurity. And I know a common question is, well, how do I get an internship in cybersecurity? I know that when I was going back to school to get into cybersecurity, I actually had that same question as well. And I actually had never done an internship, so I didn't really know how the process worked either. So to give you a little bit of background about myself before we get into this, I was a business administration undergrad. And so I did sales jobs when I first graduated. And I eventually decided that I was gonna go back to school for cybersecurity. I ended up getting a cybersecurity internship early on in my program. And then once I graduated, I've been in cybersecurity for about six years now. And in those six years, I've worked in several different industries and a few different companies. So I'd like to share with you my top tips on getting an internship to help you get into the field of cybersecurity. So the first thing right off the bat is if you're not reading about cybersecurity, you're not looking at articles right now, you need to start. That's one of the questions that definitely has come up when I've done interviews in the past is how do you know what's going on in the current industry right now? Cybersecurity is a constantly evolving subject. So new technologies come out, new vulnerabilities come out, all kinds of things happening in the industry. And you need to be aware of things that are happening, especially as they apply to the environments that you're in. So first of all, I would look at darkreading.com. And Dark Reading is a really good website for articles about what's going on. They're submitted by professionals in the industry. And there's a lot of just good general knowledge as it applies to cybersecurity that you can get from that website. So another one is Krebs on Security. And Brian Krebs, he was a journalist that basically kind of fell into cybersecurity. And he's a little bit more entertainment value as far as his articles because it's not going to be geared as much towards necessarily the enterprise side of things but it's definitely interesting some of the things that he comes across. So I would get an RSS reader, something like Feedly. And basically, as you come across different websites and sources for articles and news, just start adding that to your Feedly account. And of course, you can get a different RSS reader, but Feedly is an awesome one. And you're gonna to wanna to review this at least weekly. With a lot of the different jobs, you might actually be reviewing this daily so you could do that as well, and that's actually a really good thing to do. But I would at least be looking at these feeds on a weekly basis. And that way too, when you go to your interviews, you can actually talk about some of this new stuff that you've heard about. You might actually bring up things that the person interviewing you doesn't even know about or hasn't heard about. So that's always a really good way to kind of catch their attention. And I would also go on YouTube and search for Security Weekly. These guys produce a weekly show, and there's a lot of great content. It's more of a podcast kind of conversation style format, but they're gonna have a lot of good information as well. The second big tip is start looking at certifications to pursue. So Security Plus from CompTIA is one of the major ones that a lot of different people start going for in security. It's kind of the entry level certification for security, but you should also start looking at things like MCSA from Microsoft for Windows or CCNA from Cisco for networking. Linux Plus and Network Plus from CompTIA. So I know that there's a lot of different certifications out there other than these ones that I mentioned. A lot of the other ones tend to be a little bit more expensive and that's why some of these other ones like from CompTIA tend to be good ones to kind of start out with and break into the industry with. And one of the most important things is to just start studying something. If you wait and you're overwhelmed by all these options, you might just stay in place and then you won't learn anything. So you really need to start going. And also, if you're planning on getting into the defense sector or military or government, something like that, you're gonna to wanna to look up the DOD 8570 mandate. And basically with that, you're gonna to have to get at least a Security Plus. So that's why the Security Plus is a really good one to get during your college career. So you don't have to get it later. So tip number three is start practicing scripting and programming. So I know that some college programs are starting to incorporate programming and scripting into their programs and curriculum, but 
you're gonna wanna have some level of knowledge of these areas, especially scripting. Programming is more one of those things that it depends on the job that you get. A lot of security professionals aren't really considered programmers or developers. They might know some languages or know some things about languages, but scripting is one of those things that you would definitely use. So some of the languages that you will want to learn are PowerShell for Windows environments, Bash or shell scripting for Linux and Unix environments, Python, and C, C++, and Java. Those are kind of the main languages right now that you'll be involved with most likely in your security career. So tip number four is try to take some communications or writing classes in your college career. And the reason for that is that communication is one of the most important skill sets in technology. You have to deal with a lot of different people, a lot of different parts of the business, and being able to communicate effectively is super important. And since we deal with a lot of complex ideas, you need to make sure that you're able to communicate that to a non-technical audience. So maybe somebody from finance or HR. And then with writing, a lot of what we do in cybersecurity involves a lot of documentation. So compliance documentation, reporting, maybe legal investigations. So you have to be able to write and communicate effectively through Word. And then fifth is some useful tips that are kind of combined. One is looking around your area for different organizations or groups you can join. So there's an organization called OWASP that deals a lot with web applications and they have a lot of different groups around the areas. That'd be a good one. Or there's also some of these other bodies like ISACA and ISC squared and some of these other groups that you can join as well. And a lot of these groups, they provide awesome networking opportunities that might actually help you land an internship or a job. And a lot of times these groups will have either discounted or free memberships for students. Also look for conferences in your area because these can help with networking and meeting other professionals in the area. And then when it comes to applying, applying is one of those things where it's a numbers game. Apply as many times as you can. Just apply, apply, apply. Eventually, you're bound to land something, and ultimately getting an internship or a job is the most important thing. Getting that experience, because that experience is gonna help you get into that full-time job. Ultimately, with all of these tips, what employers wanna see is they want to see that you are going above and beyond. It's not always the A student that gets ahead in the world, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, because cybersecurity is always changing. Things are not always clear. You have to be willing to go out there and learn and experiment and meet people and doing all these things that studying a book is not going to give you. So question of the day, what are you doing to set yourself apart to get that internship? Are you doing any of these tips already? Comment down below and let me know what you're doing. And if you like this video, smash the like and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.